Welcome and welcome back everybody, it's Tia here and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a micro game published in Button Shy's 18 card wallet game series and that is Rage More by Boyan Prolojack. During the playthrough I will be giving a tutorial about how the solo game is played and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my thoughts about the game in general. If you've been around be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already and you can also click a thumbs up on the video if you enjoy it. Without further ado, let's get started. So here we have a game of Rage More set up and ready to play. In this game you will be controlling a party of heroes who are fighting the evil that has befallen the village. In order to win the game, we are going to use the symbols at the bottom of, of our hero cards in order to match them to the enemies in our quests. Once we have resolved grabbing two sets of three matching symbols, we have won the game. I'll go over some of the many loose conditions during this overview. So for setup to start with, you are going to shuffle up the deck of 18 cards and deal out two quests worth, one with three cards and one with two. It's important to place them out one at a time because as you'll notice, each quest has a symbol in the top left corner. With our quests, you can never deal out quests that have two of the same matching symbol right next to each other. If you do so, you're gonna place that card into form another quest. If you can't go into the second quest, then you are simply going to put it to the bottom of the deck and draw the next card. So again, you'll set up two quests, one with three cards and one with two. In a similar fashion, you'll go ahead and flip the cards over to their hero sides, placing them into your party. And you're gonna start with three heroes. Now, if the hero cards ever have matching icons in the top left corner, they are going to layer on top of one another, like so. So it's important to deal these out one at a time as well. Then you're gonna set the rest of the cards off to the side as your deck. So during a turn, you're gonna start by taking the top card off the deck as an enemy and placing it into the encounter area. You have three options of things that you can do on your turn. You can explore, recruit, or fight. The explore action is gonna cause you to match icons down on the bottom of a single card to icons in a single quest. You'll then get to take them off and count them towards scoring. Whatever card you use will go to the bottom of your deck like so. Now it's important to note that when you're doing the explore action, you do have to use all of the icons on the card you select. So for example, if I have a crown and a sun, I do have a crown, I do have a sun, but because they're not part of the same quest, that would be an illegal action. So I couldn't use this card for questing during this turn. I could, however, use the sun and the little snake icon here for both of these. The next action is going to be recruit. This is going to work similarly to exploring. You're gonna look at a single card, and you're gonna resolve all the icons, but instead of choosing from a single quest, you are going to have all of the cards in both quests, as well as the encounter card and the top of the deck to choose from. Now the caveat here is that you cannot recruit cards that have the red skull icon underneath them. But if you're able to find two cards that don't, like for example, this crown and this sun, you're going to take that card, flip it, put it under the deck, and any of the cards that have those matching icons without a red skull, you're going to take and flip over, put on their hero side into your party. The third option that you can do is going to be the fight action. So here is where you're going to be looking at your face up heroes, not counting ones that are covered by previous cards. You are going to choose a single hero, and if it has a red icon, you can choose up to one more face up hero in your party. So in this case, I could choose this one. Now, if this card had a plus sign and there were more cards, I would have to stop there. It's a maximum of two heroes. You are going to add up the strength of your heroes and then compare it to the strength of the enemy that is in the encounter position on the board. Regardless of how this plays out, you are going to take the enemy card and put it face up into your party. Based on the strength of your hero or heroes, they are going to be moved to a different place in the deck. If the strength is higher than the enemy card, they will stay put. If it is the same, you're gonna take the card or cards that you've used and place them underneath the deck. If it is lower, those cards are going to die and go off into a separate pile called the graveyard. Now this is the first way you can lose the game and that is to have three or more cards in your graveyard. Another way you can lose the game is if all of the cards in your party are gone, or if all of the cards in your deck and encounter are gone. After you've resolved one of those three actions, or passed in some cases, you're gonna look to see if the encounter card is still there. If it is, you're gonna resolve the bottom text, 
and you're going to place the card up into one of the quests. Now keep in mind, just like during the setup, that you cannot have two of the same icon placed right next to each other. So in this case, I could place it here because there's a crown between those two crosses. The last way that you can lose the game is if you ever have four or more cards in a single quest at any given time. And along with that, it's important to note that you cannot use a card to create a brand new quest. Once one of the quests is gone completely, you can only add it to any pre-existing quests. So that's another thing to keep your eye on. All right, so let's just jump into our first turn here. Um, there are some good options that we have available to us. One of them is the recruit option with the crown and the sun. Again, we could take like the sun and the crown. The only problem with that is that then we would have to resolve this card. And since we wouldn't be able to place it next to the cross that's already there, it would go here, triggering four cards in a quest, which would mean we would lose the game already. So we're definitely not going to do that. Um, our other options are to combat this card and pull it into our party, which might be a decent option. Um, but it is a low value card and there's a very specific relationship between the value of the hero and the value of the enemies, which I'll let you see if you can figure it out during this playthrough or let you figure it out on your own once you try the game for yourself. I think what we can do is we can use this card that's underneath here that we're not really using for anything. And since it's a single icon of a sun, we can either recruit a sun card without a skull, or we can take this card and place it off into our completed quests. We're gonna do that. So this card goes to the bottom of the deck like so, and this card goes over here like so. So we have one sun towards our set collection for winning the game. This card is gonna be placed out next. Move the bottom card to the top. I think we'll go ahead and place this card. Both of these have a sun with a crown and a squiggle. So this that one could go either way. So we're gonna do that and place the bottom card on the top. Okay, this will come out as our next encounter card now. This one says move one card from the graveyard to the bottom. So if we have any cards that are dead, they would come back um, and heal our deck a little bit. Unfortunately, we don't have any cards in the graveyard. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but we wouldn't get the benefit of this card if it were to trigger. Having a three would be really useful. So I think what we'll do is we'll fight this card because I don't have a matching symbol. It can't be recruited. I'm going to use this one to fight it. Since it is a lower value, this card will go into our graveyard and I will take this card into our party. Okay. Moving along here, kill the next card in the quest tableau with the least, or kill one card in the quest tableau with the least card. So we lose our singular completed quest card, which isn't great. What we can do instead is use this to recruit it, or we could use both of these to recruit two cards. I do like the fact that this has the plus sign on it to add. It's really good for fighting, but I think having two cards would be even better. So we're gonna use this to recruit a sun and a crown and again those can be from any of our face up enemy cards so we'll take this sun and this crown okay and there's no encounter card to resolve so we'll go next Alrighty. um i have to say one of the things i really admire about this game um and the designer is the fact that he did the art for the cards and created the game which is so amazing i know there are a lot of uh designers these days especially in the micro gaming side of things that are doing that but it's just Fantastic, 10 out of 10. Um, this one says gain the next card if it is a cross or a um, snake, which this one is not. Uh, what we could do, oh, we don't have a crown to recruit it. So we're just gonna have to put that one out and we won't get the benefit. Gain means that it'll become part of your party. Kill means it goes to the graveyard, just FYI. Um, so we could start resolving some of these quests potentially. I like that idea. This plus card is way more valuable than this one that doesn't. So we'll use this one to recruit a cross. And I have a selection of three crosses here, um, or actually we're gonna use it to explore. And since these two crosses are recruitable, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this card off to the side. Okay, and here we have a sun. Let's place that. Let's place it out here, I think. And our next card. Um, I think we're gonna fight this card since it's a low value. I can use either of my twos or I can overkill and do a four. Unfortunately, there's no glorious bonus for that, but since it's higher, you stay in my party and I just get this card into my party as well. 
All right, there's at least one card in the graveyard, add this card to the graveyard. That's not good because that would put it at our maximum of two cards. Once we have three in the graveyard or more, we lose. So I don't wanna do that. Um, what we could do instead, we can't recruit it, so we're gonna have to fight it. We can do two plus two, which is four. Now, this is a crown. On the other side, it's a crown as well. So it's gonna cover this crown here. And there is a relationship, hint, hint between the um, fronts and backs of the cards in terms of the suit. Okay, now we have a one. I could recruit this card as well, which would give me my fourth symbol. So I'd have like a full party of four face-up cards, which sounds really good. Um... And this card can only go here. But if I do place it there, actually, I have two cards here that would match these quests. But remember that if I get rid of a quest, I'm down to one quest for the rest of the game. And if I have no quests, I obviously can't win the game and I would lose. So I don't want to be too hasty with that. I think instead we'll fight this card and place it into our party like so. Okay, and our next card here. And speaking of art, I mean, man, Right here, we got our uh, we got our Dark Souls kind of undead army character, and then we have like you know roided out Mr. Tumnus. Ten out of ten. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do. Uh, ideally, we want to get another card here so that we can get some stuff happening. Um, it's tempting to want to just chain and get all these cards into our party. But if we run out of cards in our deck, again, we lose the game because then we can't actually resolve enough cards to win our quest. So I think what we'll do is we will place this card out and the text says play the next card. So this card will go out as well. Um, so we'll place that here and it just adds the symbol. So now we're at our maximum for both of those. What we're going to do next is use this card that's covered up using the cross and the snake icon to resolve the cross and the snake icon from this single quest, which gives us two crosses, which is really awesome. I'll just kind of place these out like so, so we can see them a little more clearly. Okay, and this card will go up um, and we'll place it here. Move the top card to the bottom. All right. Oh, and we're really getting down to it. Um, so we really need to get another cross if we can. That'll make one set of three. And once we get that second set of three, we'll be good to go, hopefully. Um, this does have a cross and a sun, which would, then we would just need one more sun. Seems like our best bet. Kill the next card if it is a cross or a snake, which that one would die. Then we would get two out of three in our graveyard, which is not great, but we're super close. I think we're gonna, we're just gonna gung ho and go for it. So we have our cross and our sun that we're going to explore from this one. So we have our uh, sun card and our cross. So now we have a set of two, a set of three, and then a single snake card. This one will go out. Let's place it here. We kill this next card. It goes into our graveyard. We're filling up there. We're almost out of cards in our deck. And we should be okay though, because if I use this card to resolve this sun, which I'm gonna go ahead and do, then we have three sets of three and we are able to win the game with three crosses and three sun cards. So that was pretty close. Um, we only have three cards left here. If we had to kill another card, we would have been out. Um, again, our party is running fairly low at this point as well. So pretty close call as far as things are concerned. So there you have it. That is a playthrough of Rage More. To start things off, I'll say that the art for this game is really excellent. The theme is right up my alley. Um, and I'm just so enamored with all of these designers of these micro games who are also artists as well. That's just mind blowing to me that someone is able to have the creativeness to design a game mechanically and also design a game artistically. So. 
props and thumbs up for that. I will say that I do have a slight bias for this game. If you didn't know, um, dark high fantasy is definitely my favorite genre in terms of board gaming and gaming in general. And this game, um, I'm not sure if Boyan is a fan of Dark Souls or if he just, you know, saw some images from Dark Souls and was inspired for the reference material. But this definitely has some of those vibes with similar um, kind of outfits and armors and things like that for some of the characters. So I definitely have a slight bias in a positive sense toward this game. But overall, mechanically, I think this game is really solid. The first couple of playthroughs, I did feel it was a little bit random. Um, sometimes it just felt like things would come together and I was getting all the symbols I needed for quests. Other times it felt like it was a never ending trek through the same cards over and over again, just stalling until I would eventually lose. Now in later playthroughs, I found that there's a, a, there are a couple of strategy tips that you can pick up on as you go along to make the game feel less random. So there's a lot more control over what happens than would appear at first glance, perhaps. Um, I shared some of those tips just about the relationship of the enemy and hero cards during the playthrough. So if you miss those, make sure you go back and watch uh, to check those out. No spoilers here in the review portion. Um, but there's definitely a lot of replayability here for that fact alone, which I really enjoy. It's a game that even though it's only 18 cards, even though the mechanics are very simple, there is strategy and depth that you can develop over multiple plays, which I find really exciting. In addition to that, I really love the style of this game mechanically. I am a big fan of card games. I'm a big fan of micro games. The um, kind of go-to in that sense is usually some form of tile laying game. There are many of those out there that do them very well. So I was glad to see a micro game that is card based that is not a tile laying game. This one is more of a set collection hand management game instead, which I found to be really appealing. Um, and it was like a very micro version of Oniram, but with a couple more things going on, which was really, really cool. So if you're a fan of that series or you're a fan of those styles of games um, in a micro game form, this is definitely for you. Overall, I give this one a really high recommendation. This is up there for me, top tier in terms of small micro games that I can just whip out and play anytime. And again, for me personally, the theme and the artwork are right in my wheelhouse. So that just makes this one even more appealing to me. Overall, whether you're a fan of this genre of game or not, I think mechanically it is very solid. So you should definitely check out Rage More. That's all the time we have for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe down below for more ranging content and click the like button to help this video get to more viewers. And if you have any suggestions for more micro games that you should check out or other board games in the dark fantasy kind of genre, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I always love hearing your suggestions. Thanks again so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye. You know, I unsleeve my cards just for the playthroughs. The things I do for you.